Morning. Right, I uh, just watched Scotty's video over at Love for Crypto. And one of the things that he said was, uh, people are asking, MoneyGram shares, SBI shares, shares, in things, all things crypto, where do you get them from? So it set me thinking, because my brain immediately went, huh, where do I get them from? Um, <clears throat> some of you now have been in the um, financial services for 30 odd years. I am not a financial advisor. You need to see a financial advisor. Come on then, what are you waiting for? You need to see a financial advisor um, and, and talk through what it is that you want. If you know what you want and you're fairly certain on it and you're very happy with that, there are companies out there where you can buy shares direct. Um, Stockbrokers, some of the financial institutions. Um, personally, because I've been in the business for so long, I'm very comfortable with, with what I want to do and where I want to put my money. And it doesn't match anything that any financial advisor would tell me to do because I am highly risky on my attitude to risk. Um, and I, I am extremely, um, e extremely aware that what I put in, I might not get back, right? Because stocks and shares are volatile, just as volatile um, as investments as cryptocurrency. Um, unless you have the right people giving you the right advice. Um, and that is a heavily regulated industry, unfortunately. But one of the things that I did think about was there's a lot of people out there with ISIS um, and, and unit trusts that have access to the money markets, such as stocks and shares. Not all financial institutions do. But some do. Personally, I'm with a company called Hargreaves Lansdowne. They hit you bloody high with charges, um, especially when you're doing overseas trades, which is what MoneyGram International and SBI shares are all about. Um, so it costs me something like £10.25 every time that I buy in the shares. So what I do is I wait until I accumulate a whole load of them and then I, I buy them as, a, as a, a bulk thing. Now, basically, you can do that with some pensions. So, if you wanted to, you could speak to your financial advisor or whoever it is that runs your pension for you, and you can put a small, and I mean small, percentage of your stocks and shares uh, of your money sorry from your pension or your ISA or your unit trust into MoneyGram or SBI shares now I bought mine about four months ago and my SBI shares are up by um by 20% but my MoneyGram shares from six months ago, uh, from four months ago, are down 35%. But I put some more in a couple of months ago, and that's pound cost averaging. That's taken it so that um, I'm actually only down a total of 6%. Um, but again, long term holder, you know, I know where it's going to go. I'm perfectly happy to ride the peaks and the troughs. Or the highs or the lows or the the dips whenever whatever you want to call it perfectly happy because i know that the over time the upward trend is going to be up or the long-term trend is going to be up so i'm perfectly happy i don't even look at it until i'm ready to to buy more i don't even look at my investments and um and that's maybe something that we should be doing with the the XRP, with the cryptocurrency market. Because when you look at something every single day, it will make you frustrated if it's not doing what you want it to do. 
So why not, I don't know, set yourself a, a once a week? Put yourself um, an alert up so that you get a notification through if it goes up by, I don't know, 20% or whatever it is. If it was going to go up hugely, you would know. Um, you would know because YouTube would blow up, Twitter would blow up, wherever you are, whatever, whatever community that you're following, Instagram, Telegram, whatever, it would blow up. So basically, you, you would know if there was a huge price change. So why punish yourself by going in and regularly looking at it if you don't need to? Um, and maybe that will help with that sense of frustration that we all get when we keep looking at the price and it's not doing what what is expected because it never will do what's expected unfortunately um, it's too heavily manipulated at the moment it's the wild west out there so just check it every now and then would be my my personal personal advice not financial advice um, but check it every now and then and give yourself a bit of leeway because we're going to have to settle in. This is not going to do. All of the information that's coming up is not doing anything with the price. So just be aware that and be confident in what you've bought. Buy more when you can, if you can, and if you want to. You know, don't, don't listen to people like myself or any other YouTubers or even anybody on, on, on any of the social medias that say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm FOMOing in, I'm buying now. Oh, it's going to go up hugely, da 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 Because it never happens. Nobody's got it right yet. So, um, so give yourself a breather, give yourself a bit of space and settle into the idea that this is going to be a medium to long-term thing. And by medium, I'm talking five years. So just be aware if it happens in two, happy days. I don't think it'll happen before two years. Um, and if it does, happy days. But manage your expectations. Just be realistic, realistic in what you're doing. And yes, you know, putting money into these companies, you've got Ripple IPO coming up. I'm going to get myself some of those. Um, because I think that as an investment, it's a good idea. You know, I see where the company's going. That's the reason I bought into MoneyGram and SBI. I've moved my pension into it and I've bought ISA shares um, into them. So, so basically, hopefully, over the next, what, 10 years, maybe 15 years? What have I got till I retire? 17 years till I retire, officially. So um, in 17 years, what's that going to do? It's worth thinking about. Definitely worth thinking about. But don't speculate all your money unless you can afford to. Because, you know, stock market could crash out. These companies could disappear. Um, generally, when there's a stock market crash, the only people that lose out are those that crystallise their losses by taking, buying cash in or taking it or moving it. The trick to do is just sit on it. After a stock market crash, generally, it always comes back, it comes back better. So no matter what the lows are, that's the time to buy. Um, they always come back to what the level was before um, and higher. And a lot of people don't have the, the, the knowledge or the patience to actually do that. So when they cash out or they swap it across to something that they, they, they think is gonna do better, what they're doing is they're crystallizing their losses out and unless you're really lucky and you replace it with something that has done better then that hindsight is a wonderful thing and you will kick yourself for a very long time says the person that's done that so um you know all the the working in financial services in the world doesn't mean to say that i can read the market it doesn't mean to say that that i am able to give myself advice let alone anybody else and i think that once you actually have a game plan and you choose what you want to do, whether that be on your own behalf or whether you take advice on that from a proper um, advisor and be prepared, advisors don't work for free. You will pay for that advice. But if you get a good advisor, then that 
advice will be worth every single penny because one, they will know the markets better than you and two, they will be able to monitor and advise you ongoing for what it is that, that you're trying to achieve. So they will be able to read the markets for you. Um, and if you have regular meetings with them, then, then you can look at what you've got, what it's done, how it's worked, and then you can factor in what else you need to do. Um, that's the whole point of financial advice. That's the whole point of, of seeing a financial advisor. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. You know, a financial advisor is there to hold your hand through the whole of your financial needs. That's not just a one-off transaction. Um, and, and, you know, if you, if you see, if you've got a financial advisor for a very long time, then you will see the benefit as if you hadn't had a financial advisor. Um, it's, it's, it will help you make financial decisions to better your life. It will help you to focus your financial plans on what it is that you need to achieve. So, you know, don't discount financial advisors on the normal things. There are very few financial advisors that know anything about cryptocurrency. That is the only problem. So, you know, it's it's a case of finding, and they are going to be a rare breed. So when you find them, hold on to them if you're gonna use them, um, because they are gonna be worth their weight in gold. Failing that, go back to school, because you're gonna to have to teach yourself how to do things that, that I've never learned in the 30, three years that I've been in financial services because I haven't learned it so um, so if you want to do it yourself bear in mind that what you are doing the trading the investment the choosing of cryptocurrencies what you're doing is you are making yourself an expert by having those decisions um, and you're gonna to have to live with the consequences if they're the wrong ones. And it's nobody else's fault but your own. And I'm doing the same, I'm doing the same. But I've made peace with the idea that I could lose it and that I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not an expert in cryptocurrency, but that I am speculating. I am a speculative investor. And, um, and that is a good way to be. So you need to take breath stop believing the hype don't don't FOMO on anything there is absolutely no point the market is not moving it's not doing it's going up it's going down it makes no difference don't buy in because you think it's going up it's going to stay up you know the market indicators are the market indicators it's saying it's going to blow it's been saying it's going to blow for over a year what do you believe you know so I think I laid enough on you in the last nearly 15 minutes. God, I ramble. I'm so sorry. It's uh, it's Tuesday morning here in the UK. It's nearly nine o'clock. My boss is in. So I need to go into work. So I'm going to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, wherever you are in the world. And um, and take it easy. And give yourself a bit of, uh, give yourself a bit of peace. Take care. Bye.